Okay, um, suppose you had this on a test. You had to take the integral of the inverse tangent of x divided by x squared. Our first approach, u to u substitution, um, is not going to work out. There's no way it, that the trig substitution would work with this kind of integral. There is, it certainly isn't apparent to us right now. Um, there's nothing but partial fractions that can be done. So our only last hope might be perhaps integrating it by parts. And if we call this part u, we can know how to differentiate that to get du. And this would have to be dv then. Uh, the formula goes integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So let's try it. Saying let u equal the inverse tangent of x. Then du will equal dx divided by 1 plus x squared. And let's see, we have dv. That's x to the minus 2 dx. We know how to integrate that. v would just be minus 1 over x. So let's see our integral here. Equals u times v. This times this will have minus inverse tangent of x divided by x. Now we're going to get the integral though of v du. And is this something that we're going to be able to integrate? So let's see, we have this and this minus sign here, so that makes it plus the integral of 1 over x times 1 plus x squared dx. Uh, let's see. Can we integrate this? Not right away, but it looks like this should be setting this up for our partial fractions. Um, here the numerator is just degree 1, because it's only a 1 up here. Actually, degree 0. And down here we have degree 3. So it looks like this should be ready. Amenable to partial fractions, we would say 1 over x times 1 plus x squared. That would just be a constant over x, a. And then 1 plus x squared, now that's a quadratic form. So that would be plus 1 plus x squared. And this would be bx plus c. Remember how we handled the uh, quadratic expressions. And multiply across by this, we'll have 1 equals a times 1 plus x squared plus bx plus c times x. And we collect like terms of 1 will equal, here's an x squared, and here's an x squared, so we have a plus b times x squared. And we have a c times x. And let's see, any constants here? Plus a. 
and there are no x squareds on this side, so a plus b is going to have to be 0, c is going to have to be 0, and a is going to have to be 1. So let's see, we have a plus b, that's 0. Uh, there are no x's here, so c is 0. And a equals 1, so it looks like b will equal minus 1. Okay, that seemed to fall apart pretty fast for us then, so we have 1 over x times 1 plus x squared, that will equal a is 1, so that's 1 over x. Um, c is 0, so we're going to have minus, b is minus 1, minus x divided by 1 plus x squared. So let's see, our original integral was this. Um, Right, let's just erase some things so that we don't need any more. Okay, this here now becomes 1 over x. minus x divided by 1 plus x squared. So it looks like this is going to set us up pretty well. This integral here inverse tangent of x divided by x squared will equal minus inverse tangent of x divided by x plus the integral of dx over x minus the integral of x divided by 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, and it looks like this is going to fall right apart for us. This is obviously going to be a natural log of x. And here, if we call u 1 plus x squared, du would be 2x dx. So that would be 1 half du. So it looks like we're going to get the solution to this is minus inverse tangent of x divided by x plus natural log of x, and then this would be minus one half the natural log of one plus x squared. If we call this u, du will be 2x dx, so we're going to have a 1 half factor in there, and that's it. So it wasn't too bad, but what we had to do was, going back to the original problem, um, it took us two different techniques to get to this. The first one was to see if we could tackle this um, using our integration by parts. And that got us down to this step. And then our VDU integral became this one. Uh, but this one, of course, we could solve right away with partial fractions. And therefore, we were able to proceed and solve the whole problem. Now, and again, if you had this integral here, we keep forgetting to write our dx's. If you had this integral here, 
Would it be obvious if there should be a solution to it? Of course not. There's nobody could look at this and just by looking at it ascertain that this would be the answer to it. We always have we have to go back and think about what techniques we want to use and we do that follow through step by step and in the end it should all come together. Uh, okay we have two more um, examples of integrating with partial fractions that will be a little bit more challenging so come back and join us for those and let's see if we can solve some more problems.